Ubisoft has released 66 operators over the seven years Siege has been out, all with their own unique gadgets and weaponry. To be good at Siege, you need to understand how to play them all so that way you can effectively counter each one. If this seems daunting to you, you've come to the right place, because today I'll be teaching you how to play every operator in Rainbow Six Siege. I'll be going through attackers first in order in which they released, and then I'll move on to the defenders. Timestamps for every operator will be in the description, so if you need to learn about a specific operator, you can go down below and click the timestamp. Sledge is a chunky boy because removing the SMG-11 wasn't enough, and his job is to clear utility with his frag grenades and to apply vertical pressure against the defenders. He can do this by utilizing his sledgehammer he has in his back pocket. If you walk within melee range of any soft surface, he can use his sledgehammer to create lines of sight that can be a real pain for the defenders to deal with. Don't get too comfortable though. While playing vertically, a well-placed nitro can put Sledge in his place. Also, don't forget to use his frag grenades to clear hard utility. Things like deployable shields and bulletproof cams you should be focusing your attention to. He comes equipped with the L85 assault rifle, which is a really beginner-friendly weapon with a slightly low fire rate, good damage, and low recoil. And it also comes with magnification sights available. Sledge is the absolute definition of beginner-friendly. He's reliable, well-rounded, and easy to pick up. Thatcher is another chunky boy that has the highest ban rate in the game, so good luck getting to play him. But if by some miracle he isn't banned and you get the opportunity to play him, his primary role is to help your hard breacher open reinforced surfaces. Typically, the defenders will have bandit batteries or Kaid's Electra Claws, electrifying a reinforced surface. These devices make it impossible for any hard breacher to breach walls or hatches. However, Thatcher's EMPs will do the trick. When thrown, his EMPs will disable all defender electronics in a 5.2 meter radius. This gives your Thermite, Ace, or Habana time to breach the reinforced surface. But don't make the mistake of thinking he's only useful for that reason. He counters any electronics, so you can save his EMPs for later in the round to get rid of pretty much anything from Echo Drones, Valk Cameras, or even Pulse's Scanner. His EMPs can provide an opening for your team to plant, so don't forget to save at least one or two for later in the round. He comes equipped with the L85 like Sledge and the AR-33. The AR-33 being an assault rifle with high fire rate, solid damage, and low recoil, and it also has access to magnification sights to top it all off. As for the L85, it is a low recoil, low fire rate, high damage assault rifle that is extremely beginner friendly. Thatcher is one of the best operators when it comes to utility in the game, so if you like playing support, he is the right one for you. Ash is super speedy and will make your inner Call of Duty proud. Her main job is to clear hard utility and to take gunfights for her team. Her gadget is a launcher that allows her to shoot two breaching rounds. When these are shot onto a soft surface, the breaching rounds will explode, leaving a line of sight or breach hole in that surface. The rounds will also destroy hard utility like deployable shields. In general, you should be saving her breaching rounds to destroy this utility because of how important it is to the defenders. She comes equipped with the R4C and the G36C, which are both amazing options that help her play extremely aggressive. With Ash, you wanna be having your teammates drone you in and then taking gunfights based off that intel. And as I said, these guns can aid in that significant because they both have quick ADS times and really good damage. If you enjoy a more running gun playstyle and you trust your own aim, then Ash is the right operator for you. Thermite is the OG hard breacher. His exothermic charges allow him to make a really big fucking hole in a reinforced surface. Thermite performs best on outside walls where he can't be C4 would or ran out on. This is because he must manually place his gadget on the wall, which can leave him vulnerable. So at the very least, you'll need some teammates to cover you while you do so. Once the wall is open though, your job is pretty much done. After that, you are free to take gunfights to your heart's content. His AR is a beast with a solid fire rate, amazing damage, and every magnification site up to an ACOG. Also, with his flashbangs and smoke grenades in his kit, he can clear Jaeger ADSs and Wamai Magnus for his team. Thermite is the definition of reliable. Everything in his kit is solid, but nothing stands out. If you need a hard breacher in your lineup, he is a decent option. He is easy to pick up and provides solid utility. Twitch's drones go zap and her guns go burr. Her role is to clear electronic utility with her drones. These things pack a huge punch in a small package. If you can manage to get one of her drones into the bomb site, she can clear a ton of utility for free. Her drones' one downside is that they can be quite loud when moving around the map. This is why you want to sit your drones in through unconventional locations that defenders won't expect. She comes equipped with the F2, which is one of the best guns in the game. It has incredibly high fire rate, solid damage, and easy recoil. This gun melts and is super easy to use as a beginner. Her gun in combination with her gadget gives her a ton of versatility. She can win gunfights really easily, and on top of that, she can clear a ton of utility for her team. Montaigne isn't called the mountain for nothing. He is one of Siege's four shield operators. However, what makes him different from the rest is his ability to fully extend. This allows Montaigne to act as a human drone. He can force defenders into a tough situation because if they don't pay attention to him, he can easily unextend and kill them. 
but if they focus on him, his teammates can pick up free kills. This can make him really strong for taking map control, but he is not an operator that you want to be picking every round. There are a lot of defending operators that can counter him, and if the enemy catches on, they will start running them or bring more nitro cells. Also, Montaigne isn't great on maps where there's a lot of vertical play because of how easily he can get nitro from below. So try to pick him wisely, and when you do, make for sure you're on comms, because if you're not gonna be on comms, then Montaigne is pretty much useless. You wanna be calling out all the intel that you can to your team, so that way you can get the most out of him. Glaz is a Russian operator that loves details. He used to be one of the best fragging operators in the game, but in the current meta, he isn't great. He comes equipped with the OTS Marksman rifle, and on this rifle, he has a thermal scope that is unique to his weapon. This thermal scope allows him to pick off operators through smoke, which considering he has smoke grenades to his disposal, can be quite strong. However, his scope has one caveat. That being that if he moves at all, his thermal scope will get dimmer and dimmer until eventually turning off. So this forces Glass to stand still to see the full potential of his gadget, which isn't ideal in a game with one shot headshot. He is mainly useful on maps with long lines of sight where he can leverage his scope like coastline, chalet, and consulate. But don't make the mistake that a lot of Glass players make where they just sit on one line of sight for the entire round. You still wanna be helping your team pressure the defenders. If your team starts to die, get off your line of sight and go push the bomb site to help them out. Fuse is a Russian operative who has a fascination with killing the hostage. His gadget is the cluster charge. These things can be deployed on any soft or reinforced surface. Once they are detonated, they will deploy five grenades on the other side of that surface. His gadget is mainly useful to clear utility from above, or to push defenders out of power positions. The one issue with the latter is that if you don't coordinate properly with your team, then the defenders will just go back to the power position once your cluster charge is over. Fuse also suffers from the fact that he is a three armor. This makes him really loud and allows defenders to predict his movements, which can lead to him getting nitroed from below. Fuse has the AK-12 at his disposal, which is statistically one of the best assault rifles in the game. Overall, he can be really good at destroying defender utility and causing a little chaos. Blitz, AKA Thomas the Tank Engine, is another shield operator. However, what makes him different is his aggressive playstyle. Blitz's gadget is a device attached to his shield that allows him to flash defenders in front of him. This can give Blitz an opening to kill defenders while they're vulnerable. He is also the only operator in the game that can sprint with his shield up. This in combination with his gadget allows him to be rewarded for playing aggressively. Blitz's main role, unlike Montaigne, is to clear roamers. Typically, a teammate will drone Blitz in and follow him while Blitz is chasing down a defender. Blitz with any roam clearing operator like Jackal or Lion can be a real challenge for the defenders to deal with. Blitz's one weakness though is explosives. Nitro cells will pretty much guarantee a kill on Blitz if played right, and impact grenades will stun him, allowing the defender to pick up an easy kill. Considering a lot of roamers in Siege have access to these secondary gadgets, it makes Blitz a really infuriating operator to play. But if you like playing aggressive and you're willing to risk dying to explosives, then Blitz may just be the right person for you. He's extremely fun and can actually be pretty decent at clearing roamers. IQ has an interesting personality with a gadget that is designed for intel gathering. She has great speed that can make her an absolute blast to play. She comes equipped with three great primary weapons in the form of the hard hitting commando with a 1.5, the AUG with an ACOG that covers half your screen, or the G8 which is a fast fire rate LMG. Her gadget is an electronic detector attached to her wrist. This allows her to see any electronic defender utility through walls. While she has her scanner out, she is forced to switch to her pistol. IQ's main task is to clear utility from below, and she is most powerful against Valkyrie because she can easily find and destroy her cameras. However, IQ is extremely out of the meta because operators like Buck and Zofia can still clear utility just as easily. And it's not worth wasting a pick in your lineup to counter Valkyrie. Okay, I want you to imagine Sledge except he went on a diet and moved to Canada. That's Buck. Buck's gadget is an underbarrel shotgun that allows him to open sight lines on soft surfaces with ease. It also has the added benefit of being a solid shotgun for taking gunfights with decent range. Buck's primary role, just like Sledge, is to play vertically on the defenders to apply pressure. This can be from above or from below the bomb site. Because of his shotgun, he has the added benefit of being able to make these vertical holes from a distance. This gives him some extra safety because it's harder for defenders to nitro sell him. His underbarrel shotgun comes attached to the C8 assault rifle. This gun's recoil can be a little tricky for new players, but it's good damage and fire rate makes up for it. He also has a GON 6 and hard breaching charges, which allows him to deal with pretty much anything the attackers throw at him. I hate to say it, but Buck is just better sledge right now. 
Blackbeard is an American dad that decided a shield made out of paper mache would be strong enough to protect his face on the battlefield. He is the first operator in this video that has a selfish gadget. This means his gadget doesn't help his team in any way. The only thing he provides for his team is EMP impacts, but this isn't nearly enough, especially considering that his scar is terrible. His shields can be useful on window repels and head glitches, but they can only take one bullet before being destroyed. Blackbeard really doesn't provide anything other than the fact that he can tank two headshots in a round. In my opinion, he just needs a full-fledged rework. He can be a fun operator, but you really shouldn't be running him seriously. Capital is a Brazilian soccer player with the speed to get the job done. I personally believe that Capital is one of, if not the most underrated operator in the game. I think people sleep on him so much because he requires a decent amount of coordination with your team to get full utility out of him. He has access to a crossbow that allows him to shoot fire bolts and smoke bolts. His fire bolts when shot will deploy fire that will then spread to fill a large area. They are typically used to clear power positions like Elbow on Oregon. You can shoot his fire at the player that is typically playing behind the deployable shield and it will force him out of this position. As for his smoke bolts, they will instantly deploy once shot and are used to cut off lines of sight or to protect your teammate planting the diffuser. He has access to the M249, which is one of the few LMGs that are still good after the recoil nerf, and the Para 308, which is a really solid assault rifle. Both weapons have the exact same stats, the only difference being that the LMG has a slower ADS time, but higher magnification sights and a bigger magazine. Meaning that if you want to play aggressively, the Para 308 is a great option, but otherwise the LMG is a wise choice. The LMG will allow you to hold angles and dominate from a range, while the Para allows him to have a little more mobility. This on top of the fact that he has a Gon 6 and hard breach charges makes him have some of the most utility out of any operator in the attacking lineup. At the time of Habana's release, Thermite was the only hard breacher. This made getting hatches difficult for the attackers because of how little resources they had at their disposal. Habana was the answer to that problem. Her gadget is the fidget spinner launcher, which allows her to deploy hard breaching fidget spinners onto walls and hatches. This launcher has multiple firing modes that will launch two, four, or six fidget spinners. Four spinners are required to get a reinforced hatch, two are required for a soft hatch, and six are useful for breaching walls. She has access to 18 of these spinners in a given round, allowing her to breach a maximum of four reinforced hatches in a round. Therefore, her primary job is to open hatches since she is the best one at it. However, if you aren't on a map that requires hatches to be breached, you shouldn't run her. Her ability to breach walls is very limited, her spinners take a while to breach the wall, and you need a lot of them to make a hole that is usable. She comes equipped with a Type 89 assault rifle, which has solid damage, high fire rate, but a small magazine. She also has the Bearing 9 as a secondary option, making her have decent fragging potential. Her flashbangs also allow her to burn ADSs that would be in her way of getting a wall. A Jackal is the Spaniard with a foot fetish. His gadget is the Feet Sniffer. These goggles allow Jackal, while they are active, to see Defender footprints on the ground. The more intense the color, the more recent the footprints have been left. He can scan these footprints, which will repeatedly ping the Defender that left them for a short while. It's no wonder that his ban rate is so high. His gadget allows him to easily deal with one of the Defender's most important roles, the Roamer, and it can be extremely annoying to go against. His good weapon choices also allow him to take gunfights against Roamers with ease. The C7E has good stats all around, and the PDW is a solid SMG with good stats and a magazine size of 50 rounds to back it up. If you're having a hard time dealing with the opponent's roamers, pick Jackal. He can be absolutely fatal if used correctly. Do you want to infuriate your opponents as you blind their whole team? Well then you'll love Ying. Her gadget is the Candela. These babies, when thrown, will detonate, causing multiple flashes to come out of the device. The longer you hold a Candela, the longer it will take for it to detonate. I'll be honest, I don't think there is a single way to avoid them. Their flash range is absolutely ridiculous, and it doesn't matter if you turn away or not, you'll still be flashed. She is mainly used to aggressively take map control, similar to like a Capital. And she can also be used to protect a plant. By throwing multiple Candelas into the bomb site and her smoke grenade, she can mask the sound of the planter and disorient the enemy. Also, Ying is equipped with goggles that make her completely immune to flashes. This is a game changer and allows her to make aggressive plays off of her Candelas. Her LMG aids her in this playstyle. It has a 50 round drum mag, solid damage, and relatively low fire rate. Also, magnification sights are always a nice plus. Just make for sure that you bring someone with flashbangs on your lineup so that way they can help burn Jaeger ADSs and Wamai Magnus for you. If you don't, Ying is pretty much completely countered by those operators. Zofia is a Polish mother that after becoming a three armor may just be pregnant again. She was one of Siege's most used fragging operators, but that role has been stripped of her by the balancing team at Ubisoft. She is mainly meant to be an alternative to Ash, with a launcher that performs a very similar job. The main difference being that Zofia's explosive rounds detonate on impact and are not delayed like Ash's breaching rounds, and also Zofia's launcher comes with two proximity grenades. 
These allow her to burn Jaeger ADSs and Wamai Magnus on her own, and to face check a room for defenders. When picking Zofia, your main task is to clear hard utility. You want to be destroying things like deployable shields, maestro cameras, and bulletproof cams, so that way your team can get an opening into the bomb site. Don't waste her impact grenades on soft walls or soft floors until you're absolutely certain that all utility has been cleared. Now, I will say, Zofia's main issue right now is that Ash is just better. Ash is a three speed and has a better gun than Zofia. Zofia's gun is the M762 assault rifle, which has moderate fire rate, moderate damage, and low recoil. And Ash's R4C just outclasses it in every way. Zofia may have the stuns that makes her gadget a little more appealing, but I just don't think the trade-off is significant enough to make a difference. So as of right now, if you're going to run Zofia, I would recommend going Ash instead. Zofia isn't a bad operator, and if you prefer her, that's totally fine. You can still run her. I just think that Ash is slightly better. Are you tired of calls about your extended warranty? Well, then you'll hate going against Dokami. Her gadget is a tablet that allows her to call all the defender's phones. This will cause a loud buzzing sound to play on every defender's phone until they turn it off. Also, any dead defenders will not be able to view their cameras until the full duration of the call has concluded. Another thing that Dokubi can do is hack into the defender's cameras. She does this by hacking into a defender's phone that they'll drop when they die. This allows your team to get a huge amount of free intel without doing very much setup at all. Dokubi mainly plays a support role where she calls when her teammates need it. Her calls can provide openings in the defender's intel for your teammates to exploit. She also has EMP impacts that can help her team get a wall open. Her one downside is that she doesn't have much fragging potential. She only has access to a DMR and two secondary SMGs, making her a difficult pick for people who are looking for a fragging op. I think the ridiculous amount of utility she provides is worth it though. I wouldn't be surprised if she got a nerf in the coming seasons because of how much there is. Lion is an operator that allows him to effectively crowd control with the press of a button. He has access to the which when activated, it will force defenders to play a game of red light, green light. If they move while his E is active, they will be constantly red pinged. His main role is to act as a roam clearer. Just have your teammates drone you in, and when they call out the location of a defender, activate his gadget. This forces the defender to either stand still and get pre-fired, or to run away and get pinged continuously. With his 50 round vector, he can pick off roamers with ease, but his gadget does require a decent amount of coordination to see its full potential. So if you're gonna run line, you need to make for sure you and your team are coordinating effectively. Finca is another operator with a global ability. She has infected her entire team with nanobots that when activated will increase the health of everyone and provide other small benefits. Her gadget is probably one of the most self-explanatory gadgets in the game. You simply just need to activate it when you or your teammates take damage. She comes equipped with the Spear 308, which is an assault rifle with good damage and a solid fire rate, and she has a Gon 6, which can help her clear utility. She is pretty self-explanatory. Just run around, get kills, and use your gadget when needed. Maverick knows how to blow and has mastered the suck. He is probably one of, if not the hardest operators to play in Siege. He comes equipped with a blowtorch that allows him, while within two meters of a reinforced surface, to burn through them. This blowtorch has a set amount of fuel, which at the time of recording is six canisters. Reinforced hatches are destroyed by going around the edge of them until they eventually break. Reinforced walls can be turned soft by going across the top of the wall with your torch and then burning through the bottom of the wall. If this is done properly, the reinforcement will fall apart, leaving a soft wall behind. With the removal of his grenades, Maverick can no longer breach the soft wall himself, but he can have Zofia or Buck open it up. His gadget is extremely strong because it allows you to just bypass operators like Smoke, Bandit, and Kaid. However, it is extremely time consuming and there is a lot of risk involved. While burning through a wall, Maverick can get shot through his own holes, defenders can throw explosives through them, and he can get round out on. So your team needs to protect you while you burn through the reinforcements. Once you get the wall open though, you get to have some fun. Maverick comes equipped with the M4, which has a really good fire rate, good damage, and access to the 1.5x site. This in combination with him being a three speed can make him really fun to play, especially after you get the wall open. Nomad is a flank watch operator that packs a punch. She brings air jabs to the table, which are designed to shut down the rotation of defenders. When deployed, these air jabs will emit a noise that alerts defenders of their location. If defenders choose to walk through the air jabs radius, they will be flung back and won't be able to fight back for a short duration. This allows Nomad to pick up free kills on defenders that try to Get a little too aggressive. You want to set these up in areas that defenders will have a difficult time shooting. Don't just place them in the middle of a hallway. Putting them under a window, above a doorway, or behind something else that can obscure it is how you'll get the most out of them. In these positions, the only real way for defenders to deal with them is to use an impact grenade, which will provide you with ample warning. She comes with the AK-74, which is probably the weakest AK I think I've ever used in a video game. Her other primary option is the ARX, which is definitely superior. It has good damage and a solid fire rate. Its only real downside is that the ARX has quite a low magazine size. 
Gridlock is a thick flank watch operator that packs some serious utility. Her gadget is the Track Stingers. She has access to four of these that when deployed will spread spikes into a large area. These can be used to cover an entire staircase or hallway. If defenders decide to walk through her stingers, they will take damage repeatedly. Their only real course of action to get rid of them is to use impacts or to shoot them. Both will make an intense amount of noise that will alert her to their location. On top of her ability to shut down a flank, Gridlock also has EMP impacts and a Gone 6, allowing her to aid in getting the wall open and to clear hard utility. All of this on top of her amazing assault rifle makes her an absolute demon and by far one of the most reliable operators in the game. She pretty much covers it all. Nook is a great pick for exploiting weaknesses in the defender's setup. Her gadget is the patented no more cameras glove thing. When activated, her sounds are dampened and she is invisible to cameras for the entire duration. She will reappear on cameras as soon as she sprints or shoots her gun. The FMG9 has a solid damage, good fire rate, and low recoil. The recent buff to suppressors allows her to fire her gun while keeping her presence unknown as well. The FMG9 also comes with a 1.5 optic, allowing her to be a headshot machine. What separates Nook from the rest of the operators in the game is that she is probably the only operator that you should be going in alone with. She has incredible potential to make plays and going in with your team kind of defeats the purpose. Don't pick Nook every round though. As soon as the defenders realize that you like running Nook, they will stop falling for it and will come to expect it. You want to pick her like once or twice a match at most. Amaru, the diffuser delivery one, Woman is one of the few operators that is designed with rushing in mind. Her G8 LMG will help her get that job done. It has an amazing fire rate, good damage, and low recoil. Her gadget is a grappling hook that allows her to fly through barricaded windows or up soft hatches. When deployed, her grappling hook will make a loud noise alerting defenders on the other side. Therefore, it is always smart to coordinate this with your team so they can either make noise or use their gadget to distract the defenders. Some great synergies with Amaru are Lion and Dokubi. Lion for forces defenders to stand still, and Dokubi distracts defenders by forcing them to reset their phones. If your team can coordinate effectively and provide an opening for Amaru, she can actually be pretty devastating. Also, she's fun to play, so that's a plus. Kali, aka Sniper Lady, is designed to be a utility destruction operator. Her gadget is an underbarrel launcher that allows her to deploy explosives that look like a Valorant crosshair. When deployed on a reinforced surface, they will drill through it and destroy whatever is on the other side. This can be useful to get rid of bandit batteries and mute jammers on the wall for your team. However, depending on Kaid's electrical placement, Kali will have no luck getting rid of them. Because of Kaid being able to place his electric claws so far away from the wall, Kali's gadget just doesn't have the range. She can also be used to breach hard utility from a distance. Maestro cams and deployable shields are no match for her gadget. The main issue with Kali comes with her sniper itself. This is the most inconsistent sniper I've ever used in a video game. Sometimes it will one-shot the defender, sometimes it will down the defender, and sometimes the defender will just walk away as if nothing happened. It's entirely up to Ubisoft whether you get a kill or not, even if you hit your shots. Also, if the defenders have a dock or a rook, good luck, because rook will pretty much guarantee that every time you shoot someone with your sniper, they will go down, and then dock can just revive the people that you end up downing with your sniper. She does have the MP9 as a secondary option, which has comparable stats to the F2, but if you're picking Kali, don't expect to be fragging out much. You're mainly picking her to clear utility for your team. Iana is another operator that brings an amazing personality to Team Rainbow. She is mainly used as an entry fragger. Her gadget is the sci-fi clone thingy that allows her to duplicate that amazing personality. Her clones are mainly used to gather intel and relay it to her team, basically like a drone. What makes this so useful is the fact that she has unlimited numbers of these clones. They just have to go on cooldown, allowing her to effectively drone as much as she wants in a round. She can also be a really useful counter to Aruni by using her clones to destroy a Rooney's gates. She comes equipped with a G36 if you prefer a faster fire rate or the ARX if you prefer higher damage. Her grenades allow her to make aggressive plays or to clear hard utility. All of this combines to allow her to cover a lot of her team's needs while still fragging out. A6 to balancing of hard breaching and throws it out the window. He comes equipped with the AK-12 which outclasses any other hard breacher's weaponry by a mile. This gives him some real lethality that is frankly unmatched. His gadget is the Selma Charge. He has three of these pocket breaches in a round. What helps to separate him from the rest is his ability to create holes in a wall from a distance and with immense speed. One Selma Charge when thrown on a wall will expand to create a vault or crouch hole in the wall. You can use two of these charges on top of each other to make a breach you can walk through. His gadget's one and only weakness is that it takes two charges to open a reinforced hatch, meaning that Ace only has the capability of opening one hatch in a round. This should be a last resort to Ace. Never pick him on a site where you need to get hatches open because literally any other hard breacher will be more effective. But if you do need to get some walls open, Ace is probably the strongest man for the job. So picking him on sites where you absolutely need to get walls open is definitely a good idea. 
Zero Bitches is another intel gathering operator. His gadget is the Argus launcher. This launcher allows him to deploy stationary cameras around the map. When deployed on reinforced or soft surfaces, his cameras can drill through to the other side, allowing him to switch between both sides of the surface. This can potentially allow him to utilize the taser on his camera to clear defender utility. This is hard to get off though, so don't rely on it. Keep in mind his cameras make a lot of noise when deployed and have a bright green light that emits from them. You don't want to shoot them in obvious locations that they'll be spotted. You'll get the most out of them by concealing them on flanks or in high traffic areas. He also has access to hard breach charges and a GON-6, which allows him to breach reinforced surfaces for the team or to clear some hard utility. As for his loadout, he comes equipped with the SC-3000 assault rifle and the MP7 he stole from Bandit. The SC-3000 has a better DPS output than the MP7, but has a worse magazine capacity. So the choice is really up to you. They are both solid options. Him becoming a three speed recently allows him to utilize these weapons to their full potential. Do you recognize this kill streak from Black Ops 2? Then you'll love Flores. He comes equipped with the Explody drone. These boys are slow, but pack a real punch. When driving his drones, you can detonate them at any time, but you wanna be quick getting to where you're going because you're on a timer. If you take too long, the drone will just detonate in its place. His drone can be extremely useful for clearing defender utility that is grouped together. You can use him to clear bandit batteries on a wall, a deployable shield, any ADS is protecting the shield, and much more. But you need to keep in mind when using his drone, you wanna drive them through unconventional locations because his drone is very loud and very obvious. And it may be bulletproof while exploding, but it's not bulletproof when driving. So if the defenders notice it coming, they will just shoot it and you'll get no utility out of it at all. Also, try not to pick Flores every round. Once the defenders are aware, they will start looking for your drones and picking operators to counter them like Mute. Outside of his gadget, he has the AR-33 that Thatcher has proven is a menace. It has a fast fire rate, low recoil, and comparable damage. Also, he has flashes that can help him deal with the ADSs if his drone fails. Osa, the only operator where an impact can ruin her whole day but don't write her off just yet. Her gadget is basically just a deployable shield that is completely see-through. This may seem weak and it can be if played incorrectly, but being able to create new angles whenever you want to is extremely slept on. She is one of the strongest operators in the game in the post plant for this reason. She can play safely behind her shield and the defenders have to respect her. The only thing that they can really do to deal with her shield is to chuck an explosive at the shield or they have to get up close and melee it to shatter the glass. If the glass is shattered, she can shoot the red canister on the back of her shield shield to immediately take it down. Her deployable cover can also function as a miniature riot shield. She can crouch walk down a hallway and call out for her team. However, she doesn't have the same luxury as other shield operators, so a well-placed explosive can outright just kill her when she's doing this. As for her weaponry, she comes equipped with a fast firing, 50 round drum PDW, and my personal favorite, Thermites 556. Both of these allow her to have some real lethality while playing behind her shields. Ubisoft ran out of ideas, so they took a play out of the Valorant playbook. Sins has roly-polies at his disposal. They roll across the floor and deploy a smoke wall everywhere they go. This gadget was created for a world in which Siege's servers and hitboxes functioned properly. But because of their server ping, latency, and buggy hitboxes, Sins's gadget can be really infuriating to use. Trying to line up their gadget between objects properly is a challenge, and if you mess it up, you can get you and your team killed. Sins's didn't get any love in the weapon category either. His POF9 has low damage and a hard to control recoil for new players. He has hard breaking charges and the GON-6, which gives him some utility, but it doesn't make up for everything else around him. If you are going to pick Sins, try to use him to cut off lines of sight from the defenders that can provide your team with cover. For example, using your gadget to block a deployable shield's line of sight would be a great use of his gadget, or to block off a mirror's line of sight would be another great example. But because of how buggy his gadget is, I wouldn't recommend using him. Grim is the beekeeper of Team Rainbow. His gadget is the Buzz Launcher, which allows him to shoot canisters full of bees at his foes. When these canisters are deployed, they will attach to a surface, and after a second or two, the canister will open, releasing the bees. If the defenders are caught inside the swarm, they will be repeatedly pinged for a short duration, similar to a lion scan. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Grim is one of the worst operators in this game by far. His launcher is slow and clunky. You'll get punished a lot just trying to use his gadget because of how vulnerable you are with the launcher. Also, his swarms aren't even that useful. There is no reason to ping a defender that you already know the location of, and the defenders know it too. That's why a lot of defenders, when they start getting pinged by Grim, will just stay where they are because they already know that you know their location. So his gadget doesn't really do anything. It doesn't force defenders to move like a cup of towel, and it also doesn't damage the defenders. He may be a three speed with a good gun, but everything else is going against him. I wouldn't recommend picking him competitively, and I definitely wouldn't recommend buying him if you're a new player.
Now to move on to the defending side. Once again, all timestamps are in the description, so if you're looking for a specific operator, go check there. Smoke is an area denial operator that uses his smoke canisters to slow the attacker's push. What's in the canister? No one knows, but what I do know is that Smoke is one of the best defenders in the game. His ability to delay the attackers is unmatched by anyone else in Team Rainbow. His canisters after being detonated will cause toxic smoke to spread in a large area that lasts a total of 10 seconds. He has access to three of these, meaning that he can burn a total of 30 seconds off the clock. The main use for his canisters is to prevent the attackers from traversing parts of the map. Doorways, windows, hallways, and staircases can all be cut off with an effective smoke canister. If you're feeling the pressure of the attackers, don't be afraid to use his canisters. A lot of people will tell you to save them till the end of the round, and while this is a good idea, it's always better to get something out of his gadget than nothing. As for positioning, you typically want to set him up near the bomb site behind his shield. It allows him to deploy his canisters from safety and to peek attackers using the glass slits in the shield. Luckily, his low out allows him to thrive in this environment. He comes with the M50 shotgun that allows him to set up the bomb site, and it's a one-shot machine in close range. He also comes with the SMG-11 as a secondary, which allows him to take on fights from medium range. This can be quite difficult for new players to get used to. The recoil of the SMG-11 can be a bit difficult, so if you're a newer player, the FMG-9 isn't a bad option either. It has good damage and a solid fire rate. So Mew, what even is your job? Great talk. Mew is a three armor which does limit him to the bomb site, but he is probably the most versatile anchor in the game. He has a shotgun that can help the site set up by making rotates and head holes. His SMG-11 can melt people in close and medium range. And finally, he has a nitro cell that can allow him to pick up some easy kills. There really isn't any hole in Mute's loadout. Also, his jammers are incredibly versatile. They can counter a lot of the attacker's gadgets, deny the attacker's drone work, and prevent hard breachers from getting a reinforced wall. Now, do keep in mind that each jammer will only protect one wall, and if the attackers have an ace or Havana, they can just breach the top of the wall. So don't rely on Mute as your only source of wall denial, but he can be used in combination with a Bandit or a Kaid to provide some extra cover. However, I would mainly recommend using him to help your roamers. If you set up his jams near roamers, it will prevent the attackers from droning your teammates. This can be a real pain to deal with and can buy your team a ton of time. And in Siege, time is one of the most important resources. So being able to delay the attacker's push is absolutely key. Castle is probably the most misunderstood operator by new players. Despite what you may think, his gadget can make or break a bomb site. Castle brings bulletproof barricades to the table that can be destroyed by attacker utility and seven melees. A lot of people think that using his barricades on every doorway to the bomb site is the way to go. If you're one of these people, then this is when I tell you you're wrong. The main way you want to use his gadget is to cut off lines of sight. Important windows and doorways that give the attackers a good angle are great places to start. Understanding where to put Castle's barricades to get the most out of them takes a lot of time and understanding of the maps and how they flow, but if you give it time, I'm sure you'll figure it out. He also brings the super shorty for sight setup and a bulletproof camera, allowing him to provide even more utility. The one place where Castle is lacking is in his weaponry. He has the UMP, which damage and fire weight wise isn't great, but it does have the 1.5 and low recoil that can allow him to pop heads, which at the end of the day is all that matters in Siege with one shot headshots. Pulse is bald, and he brings a pocket heartbeat sensor to the table. This thing sniffs out the life force of attackers within seven meters and relays that information to you. He also has access to a nitro cell. This combo makes Pulse a deadly option for vertical play. In the late game when the attackers need to go for a plant, Pulse can utilize his wombo combo to nitro cell the planter from below before the attackers even know what happened. His weapon, just like Castle, is the UMP-45, which may not be great, but its low recoil can make headshotting your enemy quite easy. Also, despite what you may think, the M1014 shotgun is quite good because of Pulse's vertical play role. Doc is a sexy boy and he comes equipped with the stem pistol. This allows him to give his friends some special juice to get back into the fight. One stim can heal for a total of 200 HP, which is more than one operator can even have, meaning that he can revive a down teammate or himself all the way back up to full HP. He has the MP5 with a 1.5 optic. The MP5 has solid damage, good fire rate, and low recoil. And if you're feeling a little spicy, he also has the P90, which has a much faster fire rate, but lower damage. Both his guns are super beginner friendly, and it allows him to be somewhat of a tank that is capable of taking multiple gunfights. Also, Doc comes with a bailiff, which allows him to bring some utility by setting up the bomb site. However, Doc's one issue has to do with one-shot headshots. Because of this mechanic being a thing in Siege, Doc isn't guaranteed use out of his gadget. All your teammates and yourself could be killed via headshot, leaving no opportunity for Doc to heal or revive anyone. He is extremely fun to play, but because his gadget isn't guaranteed utility, he can be a risky pick. 
Rook provides one armor vest for his entire team. Now, how does this work when almost every operator on Team Rainbow already has armored vest? Your guess is as good as mine. These vests give you and your allies an additional 20 HP. They guarantee that you will go down unless you die to a headshot, but Rook is in a similar boat to Doc. The one-shot headshot mechanic hurts his potential drastically. Because of one-shot headshot, Rook is never guaranteed use out of his gadget at all. If you and your whole team died to a headshot, then his gadget did nothing. And I would argue that this affects him even more than Doc. He does come equipped with the same weapons as Doc, those being the fast firing but low damage P90, and the okay fire rate and solid damage MB5. Both of these are really good primary options, but they don't make up for the fact that he is just Doc, but worse. Watch your doorways, because if you don't, Capcan's traps can be there to punish you. Capcan brings explosive tripwires to the table. They can be set up on windows and doorways to catch attackers off guard. Each tripwire does 60 damage to its victims, meaning if you put two of them on the same doorway or window, it will guarantee a down. You want to set these up in high traffic areas where attackers will most likely enter from. In my experience, I find that tripwires on windows are much easier to spot so I would stick to placing them on the bottom of doorways. To fit Capcan's theme of being an explosive expert, he comes equipped with impact grenades for the site setup and a nitro cell for extra lethality. He also comes equipped with the Russian VSN with a 1.5 site. That's about it for Capcan. He's very self-explanatory and beginner friendly. Just set up your traps and go have fun. Most of you likely remember Tachanka for this. LMG mounted and loaded! Well, Ubisoft has reworked him and he is now an area denial operator like Smoke. But don't worry, that infamous LMG is still part of his kit, just in a different way. It is now one of his primary weapon options. Its damage and fire rate really isn't great, but he can make rotates and head holes with it, which is a massive plus. His other weapon is the VSN, the same SMG that is available on Capcan. Even though it removes his sight setup capability, I still think the VSN is a better option overall. Its damage output is miles ahead of the LMG, and it has way better mobility. As for his gadget, he brings the Shumika launcher that allows him to delay the attacker's push. The launcher shoots grenades that will bounce once before exploding on impact. When they explode, fire will begin to spread until eventually fizzling out after seven seconds. Now you may be thinking to yourself, he just sounds like a better smoke. He has seven seconds of fire per grenade with 14 grenades in total, meaning that he can technically burn a total of 98 seconds compared to smoke who can only burn 30. However, the fire that Tachanka shoots from his launcher has a very small radius. And for him to deploy said fire, he must leave himself vulnerable by putting his primary away and using a launcher. This all combines to make Tachanka a very niche operator. He's extremely strong for holding down positions like staircases and tight hallways, but if you're trying to use him in larger areas, he really isn't great. You can stop worrying about grenades now! When Jaeger's in your lineup. He is by far one of Siege's most nerfed operators, but he is still at the top standing strong. His gadget is the ADS. They can be placed on walls, floors, and other surfaces. Each one can stop a single projectile before having to recharge. His ADSs can stop every projectile in the game except for Capital's crossbow bolts. You can probably tell why he is so strong and he is objectively one of the most useful operators in the game. He fills an extremely important role while being simple and easy to understand. Just conceal your ADSs near utility like deployable shields and then you can do whatever you want for the rest of the round. His gun, the 416 Carbine, has been nerfed a lot but it is still a decent primary option with solid fire rate, low recoil, and moderate damage. It is extremely beginner friendly and can boost your confidence as a gunner. Bandit, the crack sniffing electromaniac, is a defender that brings the solution to all your problems. Drugs. And his patented shock boxes. These things can be placed on reinforced walls to prevent the attackers from utilizing their hard reaching gadgets. Bandit's fascination with drugs allows him to be a speedy boy with the high fire rate MP7. This combination makes him quite a good roamer for your team if you aren't needed to bandit trick. If you don't know what bandit tricking is, it is when you wait for the hard breach gadget to get placed on a reinforced wall, then as soon as it gets placed, you place your bandit charge on the same wall. This will destroy the hard breach gadget before it can breach the wall. The main purpose of this is to prevent EMPs from countering your batteries. This strat works well against Thermite, but if they have an ace, the timing can be a lot more difficult. If you practice bandit tricking and get good at it, it can help you win rounds more consistently. A frost on the board makes the attackers fear the thought of vaulting a window. She brings her version of a bear trap that can be placed on the floor. When attackers step on these, they will be downed instantly, and the only way for them to break free is if a teammate helps them. The smartest place to put her traps is under windows. Vaulting a window, it is really hard to see frost mats unless you droned beforehand. Also, since her gadget isn't considered to be an electronic, typical gadgets that would counter other operators don't apply to her mats. The only way for the attackers to destroy a frost mat on a window is using explosives or looking down and shooting them when they vault. However, the latter can provide an opportunity for for her to swing and get a free kill. Therefore, it is important to play near frost mats if possible. Her gun, the 9mm C1, is solid and allows her to take gunfights without worry. She also comes equipped with a deployable shield and a secondary shotgun, making her excel at the sight setup. If you want to 
bring a trap operator, Frost is your girl. Valkyrie is the best pitcher on Team Rainbow, and her baseballs provide her team with additional cameras that can give crucial intel. As I said, Valkyrie has quite the arm on her, allowing her to throw her cameras really far. This allows the placements of her cameras to be nearly endless. Just don't try to throw them outside or she'll lose connection to them. Her cameras mesh really well with her pocket nitro cell and soft floors. It allows her to ping the attackers on her cameras and then blow them up from below like pulse. She comes equipped with the MPX, which is a low damage weapon that has insane control, allowing her to swing attackers off intel and hit some easy headshots. Remember, her gadget is meant to provide your team with vital intel, so you never want to be red pinging on her cameras. It will alert the attackers that there is a camera nearby and the cam will be shot. So just stick to yellow pinging. Also make sure to set her cameras up in high traffic locations or in the bomb site. Her cameras are meant to call out the attacker's whereabouts, not to stare at a still image. Also every new player fears Kavera. Her gadget is the ability to stand up on her tiptoes. While active, she will have reduced footsteps, allowing her to sneak up on the attackers. Her suppressed pistol, the Louise, allows her to down them with ease so that she can hopefully get an interrogation. An interrogation is a passive ability that allows her to get wall hacks from downed attackers. These are incredibly difficult to get off, and if you do, it's likely because the enemy made a catastrophic mistake. If the attackers drone and never enter the building alone, they counter Kavera's entire gimmick. She is good at being sneaky, but if the attackers drone, it doesn't matter if she's quiet or not. Also, interrogations will never be able to happen if the attackers travel together. If the attackers do all of this, she is stripped down to an operator with an awful gun that must take gunfights against assault rifles with twice the DPS. She can be a fun operator, and if you like her gimmick, I say go for it. Just don't expect great results against a coordinated team. Echo is an operator that used to be outright overpowered, and he may not be as good as he used to be, but I think he is still a solid plant denial operator. Echo brings frisbees onto his loadout that can attach to the ceiling. When they are attached to the ceiling, he can launch a loud shockwave towards the enemy that will disorient them. This shockwave will also interrupt any action they are currently doing. This means that his frisbees can interrupt the plant. This can come in clutch in the last 10 to 15 seconds of a round. If Echo still has a frisbee up by then, he has pretty much guaranteed the win. His MP5 SD packs a real punch and comes with a 1.5X, which gives the ability to clutch up when needed. A new strategy for Echo that has been getting a lot of traction is using his frisbees to support your roamers. You can follow roamers around with your frisbee and disorient any attackers that try to push them. This strategy can waste a lot of time off the attackers, but can also result in his frisbees being shot. Mira changes the way defenders think about the bomb site. She brings her black mirrors into the battlefield. Essentially, they are bulletproof one-sided glass that can be deployed on any wall, reinforced or not. The default way to use her gadget is to place a black mirror on a reinforced wall and to use a soft wall next to it to shoot enemies that walk into your line of sight. Her high fire rate vector can make an encounter like this deadly for the attackers. Also, she has a secondary shotgun, which allows her to set up the bomb site for her team. One of the strongest maps for her is Villa. She can set up mirrors on the aviator bomb site to shut down the attackers from breaching the walls, and she can set up her mirrors on the master bedroom wall in the statue bomb site to shut down the attackers from entering master bedroom. Keep in mind that there are so many other revolutionary ways to use her mirrors, and me talking about where to put her mirrors would justify a whole video on its own. So try experimenting yourself, I'm sure you'll get some great uses for her. Legion brings Lego mines that when stepped on will stop the attackers from sprinting and will damage them over time. Also, they provide a loud sound that will alert the defenders of the trap being set off. Legion is mainly used to alert the defenders of where the attackers are coming from. You typically want to set up his mines at high traffic areas like staircases, doorways to the bomb site, or windows. When the mine goes off, Legion can swing them and get an easy kill, or at the very least, the mine will alert any nearby defenders of their presence. Legion's fast fire rate, moderate damage, and low recoil T5 SMG allows him to shred attackers with ease, and his impact grenades give him the ability to set up rotates for the team. Overall, Legion is an extremely beginner-friendly trap operator that is worth your time and renown if you're new. Ella has the fast fire rate, low damage, and high recoil Scorpion SMG. This thing has a lot of horizontal recoil that tends to enjoy jumping left. It can be capable in the right hands, but I've never been able to get it down myself, and for new players, this thing will definitely be a challenge. The reason I'm talking about her gun first is because Ella fills a very fragging heavy role. Her three speed rating allows her to excel at this. Her gadget isn't nearly as good as it used to be. When triggered, they will stun the attackers for a short period like Zofi or Echo and produce a loud audio cue. They can still be useful for alerting 
your team of an attacker's presence, but that's about it. They are more of a set it and forget it kind of gadget. She does bring a deployable shield to the table, which does give her some sort of utility, but Ella is more of a selfish pick than anything. If you need a roamer in your lineup, Vigil is your guy. Vigil is the quiet kid from school, and his gadget is his school lunchbox. He wears it on his back, and at the click of a button, Vigil can make himself invisible to all cameras for 12 seconds. This effect will be ended if he shoots his weapon or interacts with the environment. Cameras that are affected by his gadget will have a white effect on the edge that will alert them that Vigil is nearby, but it won't inform them of where he is. His gadget allows him to dominate as a roamer because because the one counter to roaming is droning, and Vigil shuts that down completely. His strong weapon, the K1A, allows him to perform well in gunfights if he needs to, and his impacts allow him to make a quick getaway if he begins to feel the pressure of the attackers. Vigil is probably the best roamer in the game in my opinion, and if you need one for your lineup, he's the one to go with. Maestroviets is an anchoring operator that can destroy attacker utility or deny the plant using his evil eyes. These are completely bulletproof cameras that can open up to shoot lasers. These lasers, when they come in contact with enemy utility, will instantly destroy said utility. Also, the lasers will deal damage to players, allowing Maestro to kill attackers who decide to go for a plant. Keep in mind though, while his cameras are open, they can be destroyed with just one well-placed shot. So you want to be smart when you decide to use his laser functionality. Also, if attackers get close enough, they can melee his cameras to shatter the glass, meaning that you will only be able to see on those cameras when you open them up. As for his loadout, Maestrovius comes equipped with the Alda 556 LMG. This thing is an absolute beast. It's capable of an RPM of 900, which is the highest fire rate out of any LMG. This gun allows him to clutch rounds that any other operator just wouldn't be capable of. He also brings the Bailiff shotgun pistol and impact grenades to help set up the bomb site. If you need an anchor with lots of utility, then Maestro's your guy. Alibi has been killing it recently. As of the last available statistics, she is the most picked operator in the game. This isn't for no reason. She comes equipped with the MX4 Storm, which is a fast fire rate SMG that has solid damage output. And she is a three speed, which allows her to take full advantage of this amazing gun. She also brings a bailiff for rotate capability and a deployable shield to help set up on power positions. Alibi's gadget is stationary clones of herself called Prismas. When the attackers shoot, walk over, throw a gadget through, or drive their drones over these clones, they will be pinged repeatedly for a short duration. Their strongest use is on windows because they block the attacker's line of sight, and if they vault through it, they will be pinged for a short period. If you're going to try to use her gadget to trick attackers, you need to keep in mind that her clones do not replicate her skins, any attachments that she's running, and they don't have an idle animation. So they can be quite obvious if an attacker is paying attention enough. So you need to make for sure that your placements of them are perfect. Set them up on lines of sight that are commonly held by the fenders, and you might be able to trick them into shooting them. But otherwise, make for sure you put them on windows. Clash is bald, and she is a crowd control operator. She brings a see-through version of Montaigne shield with a zapper attached to the front of it as her gadget. She can use this zapper to slow down and deal damage to the attackers in front of her. Her main strength is the ability to call out the position of attackers for her teammates to swing. The fact that she slows them down makes them an easy kill for her teammates if played right. To help with the fact that she doesn't have a primary weapon, Clash has the MP9 SMG. This gun is basically a pocket F2 with stats that are extremely comparable. She also has impacts to help her make rotates big enough to fit her shield through. Clash can be difficult for the attack to deal with under the right setup, but when picking her, don't expect to have a good KD. Kaid is the most recent and arguably most important wall denial operator I've spoken of today. His Electro Claws have a wide enough range to cover three walls at once, and since they are throwable, they can be set up on reinforced hatches as well, making him the only operator in the game that can successfully deny a reinforced hatch from being opened. The ridiculous range of this gadget allows him to place Electro Claws below a wall or in other unconventional locations to catch the attackers off guard. You want to take full advantage of this because placing Electro Claws far away from the wall counters Kali and makes it difficult to reach with AMP impacts. You can also do something similar to a bandit trick with this gadget. The timing is pretty difficult, but if you throw his Electro Claw on the wall early enough, you can destroy a hard breach charge before it breaches the wall. In Kaid's pocket, he keeps a C4 that can provide him with some extra lethality. He also has access to the AUG-A3, a hard-hitting slow fire rate SMG, not to be confused with the AUG-A2 assault rifle present on IQ and Wamai. And he has the TCSG, which is a slug semi-auto shotgun with a 2x sight. This allows him to take gunfights from a really long range. And also the TCSG has some capability to make head holes. Mozzie is a roamer that can pack a real punch. You have the choice between the P10 Roni for a faster fire rate and a 1.5, or the Commando if you want more damage and a magazine that actually holds bullets. His gadget is a pest launcher that allows him to launch pests onto surfaces. When drones drive within a radius of a pest, the pest will latch on, causing the drone to be hacked. This gives Mozzie complete control over the drone and effectively makes it a defender camera. If you practice 
just good drone locations, then you'll love Mozzie. If you set up his pest during the prep phase, you can acquire some free drones that you can hide around the map. His nitro cells allow him to capitalize off the intel of his drones really well. Another option you have is you can save his nitro cells for after the prep phase and set them up near your roaming teammates along with mute jammers. This can make it difficult for the attackers to clear your roamers and can buy some well needed time. The mute mozzy combo has been in the meta off and on for a while now and honestly it is a really difficult thing to deal with especially for just the average ranked team. Warden is the all American dad that brings his sci-fi glasses into the field. These glasses allow Warden to avoid being flashed by flashbangs and to see through smoke like Laz. This can really catch the attackers off guard if they don't know you have a Warden and can result in him getting some free kills. His MPX with the 1.5 allows him to easily pop heads when he needs to and the SMG-12 acts as a solid secondary option if he ever runs out of ammo. The main reason he is picked is as a counter to Ying because of how deadly her candelas can be. All Warden has to do is activate his glasses and pick up a free kill on the unsuspecting Ying. Another plus on Warden is that he comes with a deployable shield that can allow him to provide some utility for his team outside of his selfish gadget. Warden is another operator though that you should only be picking once or twice a match. Once the attackers realize that you run him a lot, they'll just stop running flashbangs and you won't get any use out of his gadget. So only use him against teams that run Ying and Glass a lot, and after you run him like one or two times, I would just switch off to something else. Goyo is the most recent area denial operator to be added into Siege. He brings the Vulcan canisters to the table. That when shot or destroyed will explode causing fire to spread. If attackers get caught in the radius, they will be suffering anywhere from third degree burns to death. The main thing that makes Goyo stand out from his competition, Smoke and Mute, is that his gadget is stationary. You must preemptively place his gadget, while Smoke and Tachanka must shoot or throw their gadget into position when they need it. Goyo's fire also lasts way longer than anyone, with each canister's fire lasting a total of 20 seconds, meaning that Goyo can burn a total of 80 seconds in a round. 80 seconds can sway a round massively, and if Goyo is played right, he can have a huge effect on the round. You want to place his canisters in areas where attackers won't have light of sight on them, because if they do, they will be able to shoot them and just waste your entire gadget. Also, you need to make for sure that you're not placing them near your teammates, because your teammates will take damage from them as well. Doorways and windows to the bomb site or other high traffic areas are a good place to start. There are some tricks that you can abuse with Goyo. For example, you can place his canisters in front of drone holes to force attackers into wasting utility. You can also place his canisters on reinforced walls or barricades, so that way when they are breached, fire will immediately spread, preventing their push for the next 20 seconds. He comes equipped with a nasty loadout. He has the option between the high fire rate Vector SMG and the great damage TCSG slug shotgun. He even comes equipped with a nitro cell, allowing him to explode his canisters from safe or to pick up some easy kills. I mean, what is there really not to like about Goyo? Wamai is Ubisoft's direct competition to Jaeger. Wamai's disc can be thrown onto surfaces and when a projectile is thrown into their radius, it will be captured, relocated to the disc, and detonated inside. This is very different to Jaeger's ADSs that just outright destroy projectiles. Another difference between the two is that Wamai earns his magnets throughout the round instead of just getting them all up front. One thing that Wamai does have going for him is that if he stays alive long enough, he can capture more projectiles than Jaeger. Also, Amai has a superior loadout. He has the choice between the AUG A2 assault rifle, which is a body shot melter, and the MP5K, which is a headshot machine. I've always preferred his AUG for its superior damage, but the choice is completely up to you. They are both comparable. Wamai mainly excels when playing behind a deployable shield or in a power position. That way he can hold the line while slowly over time gaining more magnets to counter the attackers, but he can be used as a roamer if need be. Oryx with the power of the nine ancestral tenants is completely jacked, allowing him to jump up patches, sprint at unimaginable speeds, and to burst through soft walls. These abilities combine to make Oryx a force to be reckoned with on maps with lots of vertical play. He can easily transition between floors, making droning him out very difficult, and if he's cornered, he can just make his way out by bursting through a wall. Also, his Ramadash is just really fun to use. His fast fire AT5 SMG with a 1.5 optic allows him to play aggressively, which fits the gadget beautifully. Also, his wall bursting capabilities in combination with his bailiff allows him to be the master of the site setup. The bailiff can also allow him to pre-open hatches that he can use to jump through later. If you're looking for a front roamer that brings a decent weapon to the table, Oryx is the perfect choice, especially on maps with lots of vertical play. Malusi is a trap operator that is entirely based around crosshair placement. She brings wub wubs that start off bulletproof, but once attackers walk inside of their radius, the wub will slowly open, allowing the attackers to destroy it with one bullet. While the attackers are inside the radius, a loud noise is emitted and they are slowed. Now, if you place these in the open, they don't do much, but if you place them high up or around corners or in other non-conventional locations, the attackers will be forced to move their crosshair 
to destroy them. This is a big deal in Siege because just a couple of milliseconds can be the difference in getting a kill or getting killed. She comes equipped with the MP5 from Doc and Rook, just without any magnification sights. This gun is solid and allows her to capitalize on the attacker's crosshair movement. She also brings impacts for the sight setup. Malusi can be useful in the right hands, but you have to understand how to place your wubs to maximize their utility. A Rooney is the master of fisting that has laser gates that burn utility from the attackers, or if walked through, will damage the perpetrator. These things can be placed on a doorway, window, or reinforced wall. After something is crossed through her laser gates, this can be an attacker or a defender projectile. The gate will then be disabled for 30 seconds. After the 30 seconds, it can be reactivated by someone shooting the projector at the top of the gate. To prevent her gates from damaging defenders, if a defender walks near a gate, that gate will be disabled for the time being, at least until the defender leaves. You want to set up her gates in high traffic areas where the attackers will want to push, so that way you can delay them slightly and force them to burn as much utility as possible. Just make sure you don't set them up where a teammate is playing, because it turning off can broadcast the location of your teammate to the attackers. Her passive ability, the Robotic Fist, allows her to punch through soft hatches, walls, and floors. This can allow a Rooney to help with the sight setup without bringing a dedicated shotgun. As for loadout, she has the choice between the Fast Fire AP-10 Rooney and the High Damage EBR with a 1.5X. Both are great options if you prefer an automatic weapon, you can run the P-10, but if you want some extra damage, the EBR is great. Thunderbird is the most recent healer to be added into Siege and she is super easy to understand. She comes with three Kona stations that she can place around the map. When someone walks into the radius of the station, they will be given a small burst of health, and then the gadget must recharge. Now keep in mind, her gadget does apply to attackers too, so you want to set them up on the bomb site in areas that are easy to access for your team. Other than that, there's really nothing else to talk about. Just run around with her spear, nitro cell, and bearing nine, and just have some fun. Thorn is an operator that is widely misunderstood. Her gadget is the Razor Bloom. These traps can be placed on pretty much any surface, and when an attacker walks into its radius, a loud sound cue will begin. Once this happens, the attacker will only have a short period to leave the Razor Bloom's radius, or they will be the victim of a deadly explosion. A lot of people will treat her Razor Blooms like an Ella Concussion Mine. They will just throw them above a doorway or a window and call it a day. This is by far the weakest way to use them. The proper way to set up Thorn's gadget is to set them up on default plant locations and in other important locations in the bomb site. This will force the planter to run out of their cover and into your line of sight. This one situation can single-handedly win rounds, and I think Thorn's ability to do this is slept on. Her her submachine gun is a 50 caliber SMG that hits like a truck and has zero recoil. She also has a secondary submachine gun that when combined with her primary makes her a lethal force in a round. Also her deployable shield is a massive plus. A zombie can entirely change the way you play a bombsite. Her kibas when thrown will expand into a concrete like substance that is bulletproof. These can be used to reinforce power positions that your team is holding and as a reactionary tool in the round. If the attackers start opening vertical holes above you, you can throw a kiba to fill in the hole. If the attackers are pressuring you from a window, you can throw a Kiba to block the line of sight. She also has the ability to block off drone holes from the attackers. The ability for her to dynamically change the bomb site is quite frankly unmatched. The only way for the attackers to destroy her Kibas is with explosives or to walk up to them and melee them multiple times. To speak on her weapon quickly, she has the Russian VSN SMG, which is a solid, reliable primary. I will admit, learning good placements for a zombie can take some time and it is hard to master, but I encourage you to experiment, it can be a lot of fun. Solace is basically an IQ on defense. Her gadget is the Spec IO Electro Sensor. These are a set of goggles that allow Solace, when activated, to see electronics through walls. Her gadget can see attackers that are droning, the drones themselves, Nook while her gadget is active, Jackal while his gadget is active, Thermite Charges, Habana's X Kairos Launcher, and pretty much any other gadget that requires electronics to function. This allows her to pick up on a ton of intel and relay it to her team. She can also pick up free kills on attackers that are droning or using their gadget through the floor. Another huge aspect of her gadget is that it can see the diffuser through walls. This allows Solace to kill the planter from below. This makes her most useful on maps with lots of vertical play, but even on maps where vertical play isn't an option, she can still provide a ton of free intel to your team. But you need to be on comms if you're going to run Solace. Don't be that guy that auto locks Solace just to never call anything out. On top of her incredible intel gathering capabilities, she has access to the Fast Fire 8 P90 submachine gun, the ITA-12 shotgun that provides her with the capability to set up the bomb site, and the SMG-11 as a secondary that can be useful if you decide to run the shotgun. Me personally, I prefer the shotgun SMG-11 combo due to the utility it provides, but for a new player, I can understand running the P90 and it is a totally valid option. It's still a very good SMG. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. As you can tell, I put a lot of effort into this video. So if this video helps you out at all, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to hit 3K subs by the end of the year and it is looking like it's going to be a close one. But if I haven't earned your sub yet, that is totally fine. You can go and watch this video and hopefully it will change your mind. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.